appear a doctor into the basket, plunge his hand and draw it up, wriggling, by the back of the neck. That's not a police dog, said Hub. No, it's not exactly a police dog, said the man with his pipe in his voice. It's more of an airdale. He passed his hand over the brown wash rig of the back. Look at that coat, some coat. That's a dog, they'll never bother you with catching cold. I think it's cute, said Mrs. Wilson enthusiastically. How much is it? The dog? He looked at it admiringly. The dog will cost you ten dollars. The Airedale. Undoubtedly, there was an Airedale concerning me, though its feet were some air, though its feet were startling white. Changed hands and settled down to Mrs. Wilson's lap. Where she fondled the letter for a coach with rapture. Is it a boy or a girl? she asked delicately. The dog? The dog's a boy. It's a bitch, said Tom decisively. Here's your money. Go and buy ten more dogs with it. We drove over to Fifth Avenue. It's a warm and soft, almost pastoral. On the summer Sunday, Afternoon that I wouldn't have been surprised to see a great flock of white sheep turn the corner. Hold on, I said. I have to leave you here. No, you don't, and I paused Tom quickly. Mortal be hard if you don't come up to the apartment. Won't you, Mortal? Come on, she urged. I'll tell to my sister Catherine. She's said to be very beautiful by people who like to know. Well, I like to, but we went on. Cutting back over the park toward the West Hundreds. At 158th Street, the cab top and one slice in a long white cake of apartment houses. During a regal glance around the neighborhood, Mrs. Wilson gathered up her dog and her other purchases and went hopefully in. I'm going to have to make his come up. She announced as we rose in the elevator. And of course, I got to call my sister too. The apartment was on the top floor. A small living room, a small dining room, a small bedroom and bed. The living room was crowded to doors. With the doors. With a set of tapestry and furniture, entirely too large for it. So that to move about was to stumble constantly over scenes of ladies swinging in the gardens of Versailles. The only feature was an over enlarged photograph, apparently a hand sitting on a large rock. Looked up from a distance, however, the hand resolved itself into a bonnet, and the countenance of a stout old lady gleamed down into the room. Several old copies of Tom Tavoli and Cable together with a copy of Simon called Peter and some of the small scaled magazines of Broadway. Mrs. Flisson was first concerned with the dog. A reluctant elevator boy went for a pox flow stroke and some milk to which he added on his own initiative a, a tin of large hard dog biscuits, one of which decomposed apathetically in the soft of milk all afternoon. Meanwhile, Tom Brought out a bottle of whiskey from a blocked bureau door. I've been drunk just twice in my life, and the second time was that afternoon. So everything that happened has a dim hazy cast over it, although until after 8 o'clock, the apartment was full of cheerful sun. Sitting on Tom's lap, Mrs. Winston gathered up her dog. Uh, sitting on Tom's lap, Mrs. Winston called several people on the telephone. And there were no cigarettes, and I went out to buy some at the drugstore on the corner. When I came back, they had disappeared, so I sat down discreetly in the living room and read a chapter of Simon called Peter. 
Either it was terrible stuff or the whiskey distorted things because it didn't make any sense to me. Just as Tommy Martel. After the first drink, Mrs. Wilson and I called each other by our first names. Reappeared. Company commenced to arrive at the apartment door. The sister, Catherine, was a slender, worldly girl of about 30 with a sorely sticky hair. A sorely sticky bob of red hair. And a complexion powder, milky white. Her eyebrows had been plucked and then drawn on again at a more rakish angle, but the efforts of nature toward the restoration gave a blurred air to her face. When she moved about, there was an insistent clicking as the innumerable part buses jingled up and down upon her arms. She came in such, with such a proprietary haste and looked around so possessively at the furniture that I wondered if she lived here. But when I asked her, she laughed immoderately, repeated my question aloud, and told me she lived with a girlfriend at a hotel. Mr. McKee was a pale feminine man from the black below. He had shaved. He had just shaved from the. He had just shaved for there was a white leather spot on his cheekbone, and he was most respectful in his greeting to everyone in the room. He informed me that he was in the artistic game, and I gathered later that he was a photographer. And. He was a photographer and had made the lar and had made the dim enlargement of Mrs. Wilson's mother, which hovered like neck of plasma on the wall. His wife was shrill, languid, and some and horrible. She Tommy be fright that. Her husband had photographed her a hundred and twenty seven times since they had been married. Mrs. Wilson had changed her costume some time before and was now attired in an elaborate afternoon dress of cream colour chiffon, which gave out a continuous rustle as she swept about the room. With the influence of the dress, her personality had also undergone a change. The intense vitality that had been so remarkable in the garage was converting to impressive guitar. Her laughter, her gestures, her assertions became more violently, moment by moment, more violently affected moment by moment, and as she expanded, the room grew smaller around her until she seemed to be revolving on a noisy, creaking pivot. through the smoky air. My dear, she told her sister in a high mission shot. Most of these fellas switch it to every time. All they think of is money. I had a woman up here last week to look at my feet. And when she gave me the bill, you'd have thought she had my publicity south. What was the name of the woman? Asked Mrs. McKee. This is Everhart. She goes around looking at people's feet in their own homes. I like her dress, remarked Mrs. McKee. I think it's adorable. Mrs. Wilson rejected the compliment by raising her eyebrow in disdain. It's just a crazy old thing, she said. I just slip it on sometimes and I don't care what it looks like. But it looks wonderful on you. You know what I mean, pursued Mrs. McKee. If Chester could only get you in the pose, I think he could make something of it. We all looked in some silence at Mrs. Winston, removed a strand of hair from over her eyes, and looked back at us with a brilliant smile. Mr. McCary guarded her intimately with his head on one side, and moved, then moved his hand back and forth in front of his face. I 
I should change the light, he said after a moment. I'd like to bring out the modeling of the features. And I tried to get hold of all the back hair. I wouldn't think of changing the light, cried Mrs. McKee. I think it's... Her husband said, shh. And we all looked at the subject again, whereupon Tom Buchanan yawned audibly and got to his feet. You make his have something to drink, he said. Get some more ice mineral water, Marshall, before everybody goes to sleep. I told the boy about the ice. Marta raised her eyebrows in despair at the shiftlessness of the law orders. These people, you have to look, you have to keep after them all the time. 